cuchilla, so of course you need apples. You know, any tart apple will work automatically. For some reason or the other, as a Caribbean person, we always think anything that's green is automatically tart. So, green apples. We always reach for the green apples when we're making apple cuchilla. And I've shared this recipe back in maybe 2010 or something, so I'm just updating it here, especially for the algorithm for YouTube. They've been washed and washed really good because sometimes they have a wax on them. You want to get rid of that. So if you have the money and you can afford or you want to spend the money on organic apples, you can certainly grab organic apples. They won't have that wax over them. Additionally, sometimes they have the label on there and below that label have that sort of waxy glue. So again, wash it really well because we are going to grate it with the skin on. And the reason for the tart apples is because traditionally mango or pomsite, June plum, green ones are used and that's usually tart. Using the sort of carrot shredding part of the grater, all you do is you grate it till you get to the core and you keep moving around. It will take a few minutes to grate the apple, but it's well worth the effort. Especially if you're based in North America where you can't get um, mangoes as we would traditionally use in making the mango cuchilla. So yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and you're going to see it's grating into nice long shreds. Apples are already starting to oxidize and discolor. Small thing, if you wanted to put some lemon juice in here, you can do that. The next step is to grab a bunch of it. I will try to squeeze out as much liquid as we can. If you wanted to use a cheesecloth or something, you can rock that. Now all I'm going to do is put it onto a cookie sheet, like so. Yeah, so one more time, we grab a bunch of it. And that's all pure apple juice that's coming out there. If your hand's clean, well, maybe you can drink it. It's totally up to you. The next step is to place it out in the sun. And I have it on the car there. Um, the noise that you hear in the humming is the AC unit. It's very hot, so I'm taking advantage of the sun to dry it as we would in the Caribbean. Um, that natural sun there is going to do nice things to it because the reason why we want to dry it, and if you want, you can put it into the oven. My hand is shaky. But um, the reason why we dry it is so later on when we add the antar masala and garlic and pepper and all that, it will absorb nicely in there. If you want it, you can put it in a low oven, so maybe 250 until it dries up a bit. Yeah, it's been outside for just over two and a half hours and the reason why you saw me put it on the car, the, the bonnet there of the car, the hood, is because the radiant heat from below helped dry it up as well too, along with the sun coming down on it. The smell of it reminds me of being a kid on the islands and my mom and, my, and her mom, my grandmother, um, R.I.P. Whiskey, they would make mango kuchula and I guess I guess my grandma liked to have a swig or two of whiskey because her nickname was Whiskey. Anyhow, Julia, your boy making apple kuchula girl. You're watching down, Irie. So, nice and dry. And remember I said if you wanted to put it into the oven and on a slow heat, you can do that too. Now, I've seen versions where immediately after squeezing it dry, and you can use a cheesecloth to dry, to squeeze up most of that moisture, that apple juice from it. I've seen people go ahead and do this step. They didn't put it outside to dry and stuff like that, yeah? Kuchula, whether it is mango, palm city, um, pomerac, apple in our case, whether it is any of those versions, it's meant to be spicy. Now, I am using my mortar and pestle. You can use a food processor, you can use a blender. If you want, you can chop it up. It's totally up to you. We need garlic, and that's a nice big whack of garlic there. And while I wish I had scotch bonnet pepper, I don't have any scotch bonnet pepper at the moment, but I do have what we call coffee pepper. My GT people call it wee 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 peppers. And this is from my garden last year. It's been in the freezer, so I'm using those. And that's why I'm going to get that heat, that spice, that kick. It is not pure Caribbean sunshine, but it will work. And to pull it all together, we'll need salt. 
you add the salt in here or later on, it, it makes no difference. The reason why I added my salt in here, the salt along with the pestle is going to act as an abrasive to help crush everything into a somewhat smooth paste. So that is what I'm going to do now. I'm just going to go ahead and start. Yeah, I have to beat this thing like a bubbly right now. Anyhow, I'm going to crush this. couple things I want to point out here as we do this please wear gloves and wash your hands with soap and water immediately after handling all this hot stuff here whether it is the wee 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 or scotch bonnet or habanero jalapeno whatever hot pepper you're using the other thing I like to do I like to use one hand to cover partially cover the mortar as the pestle it. In case if it jumps back, it doesn't go into my eyes. If you want to wear protective eyewear, by all means do that. It's just the dangers and the hazards of the job that we, we're doing right now. You know what I mean? But again, one thing I forgot to mention. A nice load of garlic in there. Yo, man. Top of top. Top of top. Now, this step here is a little bit different than the way my mom and my grandmother would do it. So, with that said, let's move on to Uncle Chris's version. We have here one cup of vegetable oil. You want something that's mild in flavor, so try not to use the best um, olive oil that you have in the cupboard there. We're gonna add the crushed pepper garlic combo to there. My stove is off at this point because I don't want to add it in there. The one thing I must mention, vent your kitchen really well because we will turn on the heat and we will sort of uh, temper the um, the garlic pepper combo there, which means we're gonna turn up the heat and, and sort of fry just gently. It, weigh, it may want to choke you and the inhabitants of your house. Yeah, uh, by the way, no need to burn sage. Burn this. All devil and jumbia and all kind of thing coming out the house flying. Watch me now. It's got the last bit going in there and I like doing it this way because I find that by flavoring the oil, once we add, and yeah, we're gonna add the grated dried apple to here as well too. It allows for more flavor to go deep into the uh, the grated apple or mango, whatever it is you're using. I have my heat on medium low because I just want to gently bring that up to where you're gonna start seeing tiny bubbles on the side there. Once that happens, I'm gonna maintain that heat, let it go for about three minutes, then I'm gonna shut my stove off. There we go, you can start seeing the little bubbles I was talking about so I'm gonna give that just about three minutes then I'm gonna shut down the stove altogether what I'm gonna do is keep stirring it though just to break up any pieces and you can see what I like in my kuchula is for the garlic and the pepper to have a bit of texture so you notice it's kind of chunky if you wanted this to be a smooth puree you can do that as well now here's the other thing what you can do is mix this without cooking it. So the oil, the garlic, the pepper, the salt, the grated um, apple, I keep wanting to say mango because it's so common, and the anchar masala, and we'll get to that in a second. I've gone ahead and shut off the stove as I said I would. Now here is where we're gonna go in with the grated and dried mango. Scrape all of that in there. I'm just gonna level it off a bit, like so. Then we're gonna go in with the anchar masala. Chief, <laughs> I hear a little leader and brand ambassador waiting for the call, you know. We're gonna go in with a good dose of that anchar masala, and this is the key. What I'm gonna do is give that a stir. This is the key to making an excellent mango and char or kuchula or this is apple in our case here at this point is where we're gonna give everything a thorough mix and this is why earlier we dried the apple because that is how it's gonna soak in all of these wonderful flavors and anchar masala and chief is the brand i usually go with when you when making any sort of anchar and kuchula and stuff like that because it's the brand that well, when your mom and your grandma and everybody recommend it to you, you kind of fall into place, right? It has a sort of a, a very heavy roasted jira or cumin flavor. 
if you find that it's a bit dry you may need to add just a little bit more of whatever oil you had originally used just to make it nice and moist because you know one of the things I like about this yeah to be honest with you mommy would always put a little bit extra oil in there and sometimes all I need is to grab a tablespoon of that oil and sprinkle it over my dal and rice and curry chicken or whatever and your boy in heaven <laughs> sup soldiers listen if you enjoy this recipe I'd really appreciate it if you hit subscribe and click that bell notification thing if you've made the recipe Take a picture and send it to me, email address down here. I'm really trying to tell people the email address, then butts will take me address and do all kind of thing with it. And tag me on Instagram at Caribbean Pod. I really appreciate you guys and thanks for being in my kitchen with me today. Irene, Irene. All you would do now after you give it a thorough mix is to put it into sterilized glass containers. You don't need to put it into the fridge or anywhere else. But for a longer shelf life, yeah, you can store it in the fridge. I mind is just leave it on the countertop there because every time I feel for a little peckish kind of thing, I drop in some of this on my plate. Chris here, CaribbeanPod.com. We just learned. Yo, and I originally shared this recipe about 13 years ago. Yeah? Apple Coachella. And to date, there's all kind of people come on Columbus, the thing. You know, vloggers bloggers everybody else just take it and own it and thing like that but small thing we spread in the culture i'm not gonna get vexed for that all right put it in that container and seal it up and thing all right what's up soldiers don't forget to click subscribe if you've already clicked subscribe hit that bell notification thing i want to all you missing out on the new videos man come on click